Well, last time we solved for the reflection and transmission coefficients for the pressure wave disturbance that was propagating uh, down through the subsurface. We found that the reflection coefficient was equal to the difference in the impedances, Z2 minus Z1, over the sum of the two impedances, Z1 and Z2, associated with a boundary between two layers. So we have a product rho1 v1 equal to the impedance, and the impedance is just uh, density times velocity. And so we have two impedances here, Z1 and Z2. And those impedances show up in the relationships for the reflection and transmission coefficient. Now we also worked with a couple of additional relationships here. These are basically boundary conditions which require that the uh, particle some of the particle velocities uh, above the interface uh, uh, be equal to that below the interface, the same for the incident and the reflected uh, uh, pressure wave disturbance. They must be equal to the transmitted pressure wave disturbance. And we've just rearranged this equation here. We would see if we um, move these terms around that basically P sub i plus P sub r would be equal to P sub t. And V sub i plus V sub r should be equal to V sub t. But we did note that we have an additional um, point to consider, and that is that the upgoing wave is traveling in the negative x direction, just by our convention that the downward propagating wave is propagating in the positive x, x direction. So the net uh, particle displacement then for the upgoing wave is in the negative x direction, is negative. So the v sub r, or the particle velocity, the reflected particle velocity then should be negative of the uh, pressure wave uh, amplitude divided by the impedance uh, in this particular case. So we have a negative sign. We have a, a sign difference here that we also have to keep track of. And that uh, often leads to, uh, if you did try to work through this problem on your own, this is where one can run into some difficulty, is just uh, keeping track of the signs. So we have this relationship that we need to keep in mind, along with these relationships over here. And the so with this relationship in mind, the uh, pressure wave disturbance, the reflected pressure wave disturbance, would be equal to minus rho 1 v 1, or minus z 1, times uh, v sub r, uh, the uh, reflected particle velocity. <clears throat> so we have these two equations, v sub t minus v sub r is equal to v sub i. And we have z 1 v sub r plus z 2 v sub t is equal to z 1 v sub i. And all we've done is replace the pressures in this equation over here with their equivalent particle velocity, uh, p over uh, z. In this case, p is equal to zv. So we've uh, substituted uh, p equals zv into this expression, uh, this equation here. So we end up with these two equations. We have two equations, two unknowns, as we did before got the transmission and reflection coefficients for particle velocity. Um, and as you recall, the solution to this set of um, linear equations is starts with finding the determinant of the coefficient matrix. That would be the coefficients for each of the, um, each of the variables, t, v, r sub v, in this set of equations. And the coefficient matrix is 1, minus 1, z2, z1. So we have 1, minus 1, z2, z1. And that determinant is equal to z2, z1 plus z2. So we're working from those two equations. We've already determined what the uh, determinant of the coefficient matrix is, z1 plus z2. And we know that in order to determine these unknowns, we can substitute the coefficients on the right here uh, for the uh, either the RV terms or the TV terms. So if we start with the uh, reflection coefficient, the particle velocity reflection coefficient term here, substitute these um, 
constants, 1 and z1 in this column over here, so we have 1 and z1, and calculate its determinant, we get z1 minus z2 over z1 plus z2. So I think as you can see, um, easily see, is that the particle, that the reflection coefficient for the particle velocity is just equal to negative the uh, uh, reflection coefficient for the uh, pressure wave. We have z1 minus z2 instead of z2 minus z1. And then solving for the transmission coefficient, we're substituting 1 z1 for these coefficients. So we have 1 in z1 instead of 1 in z2. And its determinant is z1 minus a minus z1, or a 2z1 over and t then is equal to 2z1 over z1 plus z2. So I think you can see pretty readily as, as, as we did before that t sub v is just equal to 1 plus r sub v from this relationship here. We had the same relationship for t sub p, that it's also equal to 1 plus r sub p. And so in summary we have that um, the reflection, we had the uh, reflection and transmission coefficient for the pressure wave disturbance. And we've calculated the reflection and transmission coefficients for the uh, particle velocity. We can see that uh, r sub v is equal to minus r sub p. And then we also have this uh, general relationship that t sub v is equal to 1 plus r sub v, or t, is e t sub v could be equal to 1 minus r sub p if we substitute using this relationship. Likewise, t sub p is equal to 1 plus r sub p, um, and r sub p likewise could be equal to minus r sub v. So these are relationships that, that you have now depending on what you're measuring. So if you're measuring the pressure wave disturbance um, with hydrophones, let's say, uh, then you would use, you'll, you'd be looking at these transmission and reflection coefficients. If you were measuring the up and down uh, motion of the ground surface, and looking at particle velocity, for example, then you would use these reflection and transmission coefficients. So, so that pretty much wraps up uh, the development of um, the relationships for transmission and reflection coefficients with, in terms, you know, for the pressure wave disturbance or the particle wave uh, uh, disturbance. And um, uh, next time we'll talk about uh, energy relationships. And there's somewhat of a conundrum here because it looks like we have transmissivity being greater than the, uh, than the uh, incident um, uh, particle velocity. We have 1 plus r sub v. And um, we'll discuss that in terms of this um, energy relationships. The, uh, what looks odd and looks um, as though it shouldn't be the case actually turns out to be just fine when we think in terms of energy as opposed to uh, just uh, pressure amplitude or uh, particle velocity amplitude. And so we'll talk about energy relationships and we'll also look at some problems. So thanks for joining us and see you next time.